Vakrim, dobar den, dobro delate vo stadion na kanal 77, posle godina dve. Započetam kako ste, kako ste, dobar li ste, kaj bevte do sega, što rabotevte? I was in Russia for a few years, and then in Hungary, and for about a year and a half, two years, and I returned to Macedonia in March. Kako izgleda vse to to, što se slučuje vo Ukrajina i vo svetu dvoopšto od ruska perspektiva, s ogled na to, što tamo ste prostivali dve godine? No, in Russia I was six years. In Hungary, in Hungary I was two years. Ušte po dobro. Ja. Kako izgleda Ukrajina i svet od ta perspektiva? Russia is in a state of advanced paranoia. The belief that there is a cataclysmic or apocalyptic war coming between the declining West and the ascending East. Russia aligned itself with China and now in the economic bloc BRICS, Russia introduced into its alliances Iran and others. So there, the world is divided in two. Those who are against the American hegemony, those who are against the West, they collaborate now openly. They are, they don't hesitate, for example, to, to make deals with Iran. So China and Russia and Iran are in the same economic bloc now. <laughs> And um, they openly, they are openly preparing for conflict, a mega conflict, major conflict with the West, including military. Now we are seeing local wars. There's a local war in Ukraine, a local war in Israel now. Probably there will be a local war in Taiwan soon, very soon. There are local wars everywhere where the West meets the East where there is a meeting place, like tectonic plates, you know, tectonic plates, there's yes. an earthquake. Along the fault lines, there are local wars. The situation is very similar to the 1950s and 1960s, when two worldviews, communism and capitalism, were at war. And this war was by proxy. So you had wars in Vietnam and other places, and they were all wars between East and West between China and the United States, between Russia and the United States. But these superpowers, they never clash directly. They use other people to clash for them. They have soldiers, <laughs> satellites. And the war in Israel, you should see it this way. It's not a local conflict. It's part of a much bigger global conflict. The question is Israel. За светот беше ова изненадување. Па изненадување беше дури за израелската армија, за израелската влада. Многу е чудно едни од најсилните разузнавачки служби како Мосад, како Синбет да бидат изненадени, да бидат затечени од Хамас и од милитантите од Газа. Дали вам ви се верува тоа како човек кој што потекнува yes, на Абсолютно. Absolutely, I believe this. If you, if you have, if you develop a narrative, if you develop a story, and you get caught in your own story, when you have preconceptions and when you have models and when you have beliefs about the enemy, and you refuse to examine yourself uh, objectively, then of course you will make mistakes. Israel had a lot of information about the coming attack, including the date of the attack. Hamas actually sent WhatsApp messages <laughs> to many Israelis, telling them the last day of the holiday of Sukkot is going to be a black day for you. So they knew the date. Hamas released between December last year and two weeks ago, Hamas released multiple videos demonstrating how they're going to take over kibbutzim and kill everyone. So they, they was, there was a demonstration with Hamas soldiers on video, public video. There were various, various warnings, not maybe with details, but definitely warnings from, for example, from Egypt. So 
Israel knew, but refused to believe. Sometimes you have information, but you refuse to believe. Like if someone comes to you and say, your wife is cheating on you. <laughs> you will refuse to believe. You will deny it. You will reframe it. You will be, get angry at the messenger. So this is what happened. It was not a problem of intelligence gathering. It was a problem of, of intelligence evaluation and intelligence interpretation. There was a paradigm that Hamas doesn't want war now. Hamas wants economic prosperity. Hamas needs success in Gaza to remain in power. Because Hamas, the popularity of Hamas declined from 53% in 2021 to 31% in 2023. There was a total collapse in the popularity of Hamas. And the Israelis convinced themselves that the way to pacify Hamas is to let Hamas, to allow Hamas to create an economic miracle in Gaza. So the Israelis gave 60,000 work permits to people from Gaza to work inside Israel. They gave, they gave uh, the Gaza Strip 75% of its electricity consumption, 50% of its fuel consumption, 69% of its food consumption, and 73% of its medication consumption all came from Israel. Israel collaborated monetarily with the Hamas. Most of the budget of, of Hamas came from Israel in the form of VAT refunds. <laughs> so there was full-fledged collaboration between Israel and the Hamas, and Israel convinced itself that the Hamas will no longer emphasize the military solution, but instead now is busy getting re-elected, political power, staying in power, etc., etc. That was a huge mistake because the Hamas was preparing for war. Дали тие проценки се лоши поради ситуацијата обштествено, посебно политичка во Израел, каде што имаше големи протести кои што влијаја и на падот на патриотизмот, имаше информации дека луѓе одбиваат да водат во војска, зато што се незадоволни од корупцијата, од обидите на Тенјако и владата да го прилагодат законот за судството во нивни цели за се заштитат, односно да ја спречат да го спречат влијанието и контролата од судовите врз извршната власт, врз владата, врз министрите. We must distinguish two, two things. On the level of intelligence, and especially military intelligence and so on, there were political expectations. Um, the government of Netanyahu, which is a combination of criminals and ultra-religious people. The government of Netanyahu made it clear that its priority is the West Bank, the heartland, the historical heartland of the Jewish people, the West Bank in, and Jerusalem. And that Gaza and the Gaza Strip and the settlements along the Gaza border are not very important. So of course, all the machinery of the military, the, most, the Shabak, the Shin Bet, the, all this machinery try to satisfy and gratify the boss Netanyahu, Netanyahu destroyed all the democratic institutions in Israel. There was only one decision maker in Israel. It became an effective dictatorship. Israel became absolutely effective dictatorship. And so exactly like Putin, Putin is surrounded by people who keep telling him what he wants to hear. It's the same with Netanyahu. He's, Netanyahu said the West Bank is the risk. The West Bank, is. we should focus on the West Bank. So everyone said, you're right. You're a genius. You're amazing. You're never wrong. Absolutely. And they moved 95% of the army to the West Bank during the Jewish holidays. Fewer than 5% of army units remained around the southern border. And these army units were two, three hours away. It took the army seven to nine hours to get to the border, because all the army was in the West Bank, protecting settlers and settlements and preparing itself for the big attack in the West Bank, which never happened to this very day. So there was a misconception um, which was politically motivated, very similar to the Iraq war in, in the United States, 
where everyone said that Iraq has weapons of mass, destruct mass destruction. And we now know that this was complete nonsense. But this is what Bush wanted to hear. So this is what he was told, you know. The political level, the political elite and echelon have huge influence on interpretation and evaluation of intelligence. No one wants to be in conflict with the prime minister, you know. This is, this is one part. The second part, not connected to this, is the fact that there is a total breakdown of trust and consensus between various parts of the population of the state of Israel. Religious people and secular people, left and right, settlers and people inside the Green Line. You have a variety of groups in Israel that can no longer agree what is Israel, what is the identity of Israel, what should be the future of Israel, what's the vision of Israel, etc. There's no agreement anymore. This is why I definitely predict a civil war. After this, after this war is over, there will be a civil war in Israel. I have no doubt about this. Maybe it will be slow motion civil war. Maybe it will be mainly legal civil war. But there's going to be a clash. There's going to be a war, a conflict, enormous conflict, which will threaten the existence of Israel. When the role of the two countries in the world, as a strategic partner and partner in Israel, as a mentor, zato što izlegova deka i oni se zatečeni. Osim, ako ne se vo pravo tije što vela deka ova im odgovara na Amerikancite za da povtorno se vratat silno na Bliskijot Istok i da je stavat svojata šaka na Bliskijot Istok od kako počne da ih gubat pozicijite. Saudijska Arabija se dobriži so Kina, se dobriži so Iran i drugi takvi potezi koji što ne im odaja vo prilog, odnosno go namaluva влијанието и инфлуенцата на Соединетите Американски држави. The timing could not have been worse for the United States. The United States needs all its resources to support Ukraine against the real major enemy, Russia. Iran is nothing compared to Russia. Russia is the real enemy. So the emphasis of the United States was on Ukraine. The Republicans in the United States refused, refused to approve a budget to support Ukraine. So now technically there is no money to support Ukraine. And in addition to that, the United States as a country doesn't have a budget. There's no budget agreed. They agreed only on 45 days of financing. And the Republicans now elected a new speaker of Congress and there is hardcore group of Republicans that say that they will sabotage a budget and close down the government and definitely will not allow any further aid to Ukraine. The last thing the United States needs now is another crisis where they need additional money and additional weapons. This is dividing the American effort. This is in favor of Russia. That's why Russia is very happy with what happened in, in Israel. Now, this whole thing was provoked not by the United States. It was provoked by Iran, because Iran was terrified of what was happening. What was happening is that the United States was about to bribe Saudi Arabia with a treaty, defense treaty, in order to normalize relationships, relations with Israel. This would have created an axis of the two biggest enemies of Iran, Israel and Saudi Arabia. In, in conjunction with a defense treaty with the United States. So if Iran attacks Saudi Arabia, America is obligated to attack Iran, like Taiwan, same like Taiwan. It used to be, the treaty that used to be with Taiwan. Now there isn't, but used to be. So, and the same like the treaty that America has with, with Israel. So Iran was in a state of absolute panic, I have no doubt. The timing of the attack of Hamas is not an accident. It was intended mainly to sabotage the agreement with Saudi Arabia. Mainly. <laughs> there was a main goal. Also, the agreement with Saudi Arabia is very bad for the Palestinians. Because this is agreement number seven, 
Six other Arab states signed peace agreements and diplomatic relations with Israel, Morocco, Bahrain, United Arab Emirates, and so on. And there is a trend here. Arab countries make peace with Israel. They accept Israeli investment and Israeli tourists. They share intelligence with Israel as if the Palestinian issue is solved, as if there's no more problem with the Palestinians. They're the interests of the Palestinians, the problems of the Palestinians, the demands of the Palestinians, many of which are legitimate demands, they are off the table. It's as if the Arab states are saying, we accept the existence of Israel at the expense of the Palestinians. The, the next treaty with Saudi Arabia really was a huge problem because Saudi Arabia is the religious center of Islam. It is known as the keeper of the shrines or the keeper of the sacred places. Mecca and Medina are in Saudi Arabia. So Saudi Arabia to make peace with Israel is like Islam is making peace with Israel. Now, both Hamas and Hezbollah, the long arms of Iran, they are both religious resistance movements. Hamas is an Islamic movement, so is Hezbollah. And so they could not accept that the center of Islam is making peace with Israel. In the charter of, the, of Hezbollah and in the charter of Hamas, the destruction of the state of Israel is a major target. This is the manifesto. This is the platform of Hamas and Hezbollah. Hamas lately said that maybe this generation will not destroy Israel, maybe the next generation. So they accepted a two-state solution as a temporary solution. Because according to the most radical interpretations of Islam, the fundamentalist, the Shia interpretations of Islam, for the Jews to have a state is a transgression against God. The Jews in Islam are known as Ahl al-Kitab or Ahl al-Dima. According to Islam, anyone who is not a Muslim should be second-class citizen under the protection of the Islamic, Islamic regime. And for a second-class citizen, Ahl al dima to create its own state and army is not a transgression against Muslims, is a transgression against the cosmic order of God. This is blasphemy, sacrilege, and it is, it is the holy obligation of the Muslims to restore the order in the world that God has dictated. God has demanded it. So this is jihad. This is jihad. Hamas openly says that it is involved in jihad against Israel. Jihad is any struggle to restore the order of God. You can have individual jihad, personal jihad, to, for example, if you are drinking, to stop drinking, because God forbids drinking, and you can make jihad to stop drinking. To make jihad against the Jewish state is to restore God's command that Muslims and only Muslims are the people of God and all the others are mistaken and so on. So there is a religious dimension here and Saudi Arabia is not a country. It's a religious center. And so for a religious center to make peace with Israel, that was unthinkable. It had to be stopped at any cost, had to be stopped. Hamas, Hamas is an acronym, is an acronym. Uh, it is an acronym for uh, resistance movement of Islam, Islamic resistance movement. Hawikatul Muqawamiya al Islamiya. That's Hamas. So it's, these are like ISIS, these are variants of ISIS, absolutely kind of caliphate, you know. This is not Fatah. Fatah is a secular, intellectual, pseudo-Western, almost Western organization. Fatah, you can talk to as if you would talk to the government in Italy, you know. They, they are 20th century nation state-oriented movement. Hamas is not. 
Hamas is Hamas lives in the sixth century, in the seventh century. Absolutely. Ne, prašam samo preko ste se iznenadovanje imali informaciji raznovački te službi. Od kada to oružje? Se spomenuva petijedi raketi do sega istrelani. Ti je treba da vlezat od nekade, preko more, preko tuneli, preko kopno, preko vozduh. Pa sega se spomenuva iranski vidovi na oružje. Pa oružje koje što sami te ki pravat Hamas. Pa se spomenuva i vojnata v Ukrajina. Telo do oružje to koje što se dava kako pomoć na Ukrajina. Preko šverceri otišlo kaj Hamas. Pa duri Zelenski gi obvini Rusite deka oružje to što go zaplenile od Ukrencite go isporačale na Hamas. Od kada je toliko oružje na jedno toliko malo mesto? Koliko Skopje je to, ali pomalo od Skopje? Yes, people don't realize that the Gaza Strip is tiny. The border between Gaza Strip and Israel is 47 kilometers. And Gaza Strip is the size of Skopje up to Katlanovo. More or less. Tiny. Without Katlanovo. Tiny. So, and in this area, you have 2.1 and maybe 2.4 million. No one knows. Between 2.1 and 2.4 million, it's the most densely populated area in the world. Much more than Hong Kong. There is Gaza up and Gaza down, underground. There is a whole city underground, enormous. Tunnels, manufacturing facilities, factories, schools, mosques and even residences of top people in the Hamas and so on. So you have a whole city under Gaza. Everything the Israelis are destroying is a joke. It's not relevant to the capacity of Hamas. As long as Israelis don't use bunker-busting bombs, bombs that destroy bunkers, as long as they don't use these bombs, they are not touching Hamas. They are decapitating the leadership of Hamas. But Hamas has multiple layers of leadership. They have re redundancy. There was a period that Israel killed. There was a period that Israel killed all the leaders of Hamas, Al Ghantisi and Sheikh Yassin, everyone, yeah. and it didn't affect Hamas because they have multiple layers. Uh, so everything is happening underground, and Israel has not touched the underground yet. Now. As to your question, where the where the bombs came from, where the rockets came from, and so on and so forth. First of all, it is important to understand that these are very, very not sophisticated weapons. The rockets are very basic, very simple. Um, that's why many of these rockets fall in the wrong places, and, and so on and so forth. These rockets are manufactured at, within Gaza. Some of these rockets came from the Israeli Defense Forces. Israel rocketed Gaza over, well, in, in the last 25 years, four times. And some of these rockets did not explode. Hamas collected these rockets. So ironically, one of the sources is the Israeli Defense Forces. Another source smuggled ammunition. Um, Iran, for example, sent to Gaza a lot of construction material construction materials and inside the construction materials they hid rockets but most of the rockets are manufactured locally um, engineers from Hamas travel regularly to Iran and to Lebanon where they get where they are trained to produce rockets so this is Iranian knowledge and these engineers go on an annual basis to renew their knowledge to get training and so on and come back, come back. Actually, engineers are so important that for a very long time, the chief leader of Hamas, the main leader of Hamas, was an engineer, a rocket engineer. The a, moment, samo, a, moment. Da vidam do kaj pošto imamo ograničivanje, koliko možemo da snijeme. Sure. Moment, samo, samo što je 5-6 minuti ki produžimo, samo da napravim. Here we are. Yeah. 
Dobro, pušti da se snima. Snima, se snima, tako Da mi sliku od nego. Aha, dobro. Vakbin, da li se sluša me? Do you hear me? Always. Da prodlužim ovo samo s oružje, to završi go. Zada prodlužim s drugo to prašenje. Znači, ostane ovo što je delot s I wanted to say that most of, most of the weapons are produced uh, in local factories. They are not very sophisticated. That's why many of them fall in, in the wrong place. And um, over the years, uh, Hamas and Hezbollah accumulated tens of thousands of uh, rockets. Uh, Iran invested about $100 million in uh, rocket manufacturing facilities and in the rockets themselves. So... And of course, if you send, if you use simultaneously two or three thousand rockets, the Iron Dome defense system cannot cope with this number. The Iron Dome maximum can cope with 1,800 incoming missiles. If you exceed this number, all the other missiles will hit the targets or will, will strike. So the Iron Dome was overwhelmed, the defense system of Israel. This is the uh, this is the picture more or less. What about weapon from Ukraine from uh, Russia? I have no knowledge or indication that there is such a thing. I think this is fake news. Usmene Vakim, vi znate li ili vaši kuno veše to kakvi be reakcije od Kina i od Rusije? Najgolem delo svetot go osudi Hamas zverskoto, divjačkoto odnesuvanje so civilite. Rusija i Kina beja izbalansirani, vozdržani i Turcija spaja tukaj, povikuvajat na formiranje na palestinska država kako rešenje na ova kriza. Da li to bi bilo rešenje spored vas? Zato što neke spomenate... It is impossible to establish a Palestinian state. The idea of a Palestinian state is total nonsense and delusion. If you look at the map, how will you connect the West Bank to Gaza? What way is there to connect the West Bank to Gaza except if you cut Israel in two pieces? So the two-state solution is complete nonsense. The one-state solution, where Arabs and Israelis will live together in a single state, is also not acceptable because in by 2050 the palestinians will be a majority in a one state solution and the jews will never accept this so the country can be jewish but not democratic or it can be democratic but not jewish these two alternatives are not acceptable there is no solution there are two nations there two peoples the jews and the arabs the Palestinians, and they demand 100% of the same very small territory. This is not like Kosovo. In Kosovo, the Albanians did not demand Belgrade. The Albanians did not insist to have Novi Sad. Yeah? So it's not the same like Kosovo. It's not a war or a conflict about a highly specific part of a country. It's a conflict about the whole country. The demand is 100%. Gaza, for example, 71% of the population of Gaza, these are refugees from other locations within the state of Israel. Refugees and the second generation, the sons and daughters of refugees. That is 71%. These people don't regard Gaza as their home. They regard Gaza as a temporary refugee camp. They want to go back. They want to go back to their homes, to their orchards, to their gardens, to their farms. 
These are all villagers, peasants. They are very intimately connected to the land. They keep the keys of their houses. 75 years later, this conflict started in 1882. 1882, and the Arabs consider the Jews that have arrived from Europe and from America and from, they consider them as colonialists. They say that the state of Israel is a form of colonialism. And, you know, they, all the Jews should go back where they came from. And all the country belongs to the Palestinians. That's it. Every square centimeter belongs to the Palestinians. They're not willing to, there's no compromise here. There is temporary compromise, yes. So we can talk about temporary solutions. But the core problem is that the demands are mutually exclusive. It's a zero-sum game. Either the Jews win and the Palestinians lose, or the Palestinians win and the Jews lose. Therefore, only one of these peoples and nations can survive. The other must go. I know this is... This is uh, unusual to say this because you are not supposed to say such things. But this is the reality. This conflict will never stop until one of these nations give up and go elsewhere. Move away. Tony Vakim, let's finish with this how this conflict can affect on what is happening in Ukraine. Before you said, now it should be the most important thing Русија. Дали овој конфликт ќе го забрза решавањето на војната во Украина, некаков мировен договор или и таа војна ќе трае? I believe so. I believe the United States will have to choose between Ukraine and Israel in terms of military assistance, in terms of budget. The United States is not as strong as it used to be 50 years ago. It is a very, it's very limited. Inside the United States, there are enormous conflicts between left and right, conservatives and, you know, Republicans and Democrats and so on. It's a broken country. The United States is a broken country. So it, it would have to choose Israel or Ukraine. And I have no doubt that it will choose Israel, not Ukraine. At that point, the United States will have to put pressure on Ukraine to compromise with Russia, to finish the war. So I predict that very soon, Ukraine will face pressure from the EU, from from the United States, and so on, to sit at the table with the Russians and to offer them territorial concessions to finish this war, because the attention of the United States must be focused on on Israel, and must and they must somehow stop Iran from taking over the, the entire region. Iran is not only in Lebanon; is in, is in Yemen, <laughs> is in Yemen, is in. Gaza is on the border of Egypt, which is also a major ally of the United States. The United States gives Israel and Egypt together every year $6 billion in military aid. $6 billion. That is the biggest allocation of resources by the United States anywhere in the world. The United States is giving to Israel more money than it is giving to NATO more money than it is giving to Taiwan. Israel is critical, also because of the power of the Jews in, in the United States. Anthony Blinken, if you don't know, is a, is a Jew. <laughs> so, you know, we have to face realities. And of course, Zelensky is a Jew. Yeah. We have to face realities. The war in Ukraine has, is, has taken too long. Ukraine has failed to produce any breakthrough in its recent offensive. The Russia, all Russia has to do is to wait. And that's what Russia is doing, is waiting. And soon, I think Russia will reverse the advances of the Ukrainian army. And this, the song, the story will start from zero again, another offensive. No, this is not sustainable. There are also millions of Ukrainians outside Ukraine. They are putting a lot of pressure on social welfare systems, education systems, health systems, all over the European Union. We saw what happened in Slovakia. In Slovakia, there's a new government which is pro-Russian. It's not a joke. The European Union could face fragmentation because of the Ukraine war. So the European Union also has to protect its integrity 
somehow. At some point, they will put a stop to the Ukraine war and force Ukraine to give Russia some territory, some concessions, something. Тогаш за каква правда да зборуваме ако се наградува агресорот? Или Полит, комплицирано политикс, е тоа? Политикс, Или е покомплицирано? There are two there are two sentences in politics. Every all politics is local. <laughs> all politics is local. And all politics is real politics. We you have to play with reality. You can't play with your wishes, with your dreams, with your values, with these are irrelevant in politics. The reality is Israel is sitting, Israel is the buffer, is the Israel separates the Shiite, the Shiite sphere of Islam from the Sunni sphere of Islam. South to Israel, you have Saudi Arabia, you have Egypt, these are Sunni countries. North of Israel, you have Iran, you have part of Iraq, etc. So Israel is a buffer between the Sunni and the Shia part, the Sunni and the Shia part of, of Islam, and therefore it is of critical importance, super critical importance. Now, Ukraine is a very important country, and it's all true, but you know what? The aims, the, the goals of the West have been accomplished in Ukraine, because Ukraine damaged Russia. Russia's economy is totally ruined. Don't believe the propaganda. Is totally ruined. Russia's military is in bad shape. Russia's politics are unsta is unstable. Russia has been damaged enormously from the war in Ukraine. The West is satisfied. The West is happy. Russia is much, much weaker than it was two years ago. Mission accomplished. Go home. The Ukraine war has no additional value for the West. None. And the war in Israel could transform the total global picture, should the Shiites take over the Muslim sphere, the, this is a formidable enemy. And if Iran made an alliance with China and Russia, as they did in BRICS, <laughs> this is a game changer. The United States must stop this. It's much more important than Ukraine, I'm sorry to say. Isaac Reisau. Доаѓате во Македонија често, престојувате тука. Може ли Македонија да биде сега пооптимистична затоа што ќе се забрзаат процесите на незино европско интегрирање за да се смират сите безбедностни ризици на Балканот за да може Западот да се посвети на Израел на Европа? I haven't been here many, many years. I don't know what's happening here. I have no knowledge as to, and I don't usually speak about things that I'm not 100% sure of. But generally speaking, my interpretation is completely different. I think the European Union will be, would be more reluctant to accept new members. I think enlargement of the European Union will be postponed, not accelerated. The pressures and the stresses and the tensions within the European Union are on the verge of a breaking point. It's not only Slovakia, it's Poland, it's Hungary, it's, you know, there are serious problems within the European Union. The last thing they need, the last thing they need are new members and definitely the last thing they need are new Balkan members. They're going to make all the noises, they're going to give you hope as they've been doing for decades. I doubt very much that anything near anything soon is going to happen. I think the EU, the best policy of the EU right now is to freeze, simply to freeze. It lost the United Kingdom. It's looking bad. So they need just to freeze. Any movement they will make now, any decision, any choice can endanger the whole union, in my view. That's a great risk for Balkan, for destabilization. If it doesn't give a chance, if it doesn't give a chance to this Тие се принудени во очи да бараат и други шанси. Брикс, Кина, Русија. Already, they already are flirting with Russia. Serbia is flirting with Russia. Yeah? So, I don't think the European Union will sacrifice its own core interests and its own future integrity just to pacify the Balkans. I don't think they're going to do that. Because had they done, had, if they had this in mind, they would have accepted Ukraine as a member. That's a much more important pacification. 
Classification would not be a motivation to for membership. Absolutely not, in my view. Благодарам, да сте живи и здрави. До кога сте тука? I I came in March and I plan to be here until January. Aha. А ке се видиме на кафе другата недела ке ви сява. With pleasure. Take care. See you. Thank you. Bye.